Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 9 april 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today's bulletin will be in English. We do have Morse code today, some data and an SSTV picture in PD50. We will start now with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. Hello, this is Bob McCready, GK0FGX, with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2 RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now the radio propagation report compiled by Golf 0 Kilowatt Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha, and Golf 4 Delta Delta Kilo on Friday the 8th of April. It's beginning to look like we're getting an early taste of the upcoming solar minimum. The sun currently only has one small sunspot group, and at the time of writing there were no new spots coming up behind it. The solar flux index hovered in the low to mid-80s this week, giving a noon time critical frequency of 5.9 MHz on Tuesday and 5.2 MHz on Wednesday, as measured at Chilton near Harwell. These figures suggest that the maximum usable frequency over a 3,000 km path struggled to get up to 15 meters, although Fox Tango 4 Juliet Alpha on Juan de Nova has been audible on 12 metres at times. 40 metres was only open to Europe and beyond after losing its valuable inter-G capabilities. The Earth was hit by yet more plasma from the solar wind in the early hours of Friday, sending the K index up to 5. Next week, NOAA predicts the solar flux index will decline further to around 80. Unsettled geomagnetic conditions are predicted for the 11th to the 14th, thanks to recurring coronal holes on the solar surface and high-speed solar wind streams. We suggest you get your HFDXing in on Sunday before the onslaught from the solar wind. Now the VHF and up propagation news. It's going to be another unsettled week with low pressure being the main driving force behind the weather and we're therefore very unlikely to see any enhanced conditions on VHF or UHF due to tropo. There is however still a very good chance of further heavy showers, some thundery and these big clouds can produce good rain scatter paths on the gigahertz bands. We mentioned last week that April is the time to start looking on 10 metres for sporadic E openings. There were indeed some fleeting European 10 metre sporadic E paths logged on the various cluster sites last week. Admittedly, some of these have been beacons and skimmers, but it's worth putting in a human presence on 10 metres just in case any early season paths are accessible from Britain. As the moon moves away from perigree, degradation on the EME path will increase throughout the week. The increase will be approximately 1.9 dB by next weekend, and the early part of this week will be favoured by small EME stations. The 2016 Lyrids meteor shower peaks on the 21st and 22nd of April. A noticeable increase in meteor rates can be expected from about the 16th. And that's all for this week from the propagation team. We had a bit of a troublesome week on the repeater previous week. Normally it's better not to talk about these subjects on the ham bands. Please, please take up the telephone or some kind of a chat channel if you do. But... However, Eric Guth for Z4UG had an interview recently with famous talk show host Art Bell W6OBB and Art speaks freely about similar problems experienced in the US on 75 meters, the upper half of the much larger 80 meters band which Region 2 hams are able to use. Just to show that problems we experience over here are not unique, which also should make problems slightly less disturbing, so keep that in mind. These things can happen anywhere people can talk anonymously and or unmoderated. It's that effective. And, and I put it up mainly for 160, 80 and 40. I really, really love 160 meters. I love 75 meters. And I spent a great deal of, seven, on, of time on 75. And I, I want to talk briefly, if I can, Eric, about my lost love. And when I say lost love, that's 75 meters. Uh, there are some pretty uh, bad actors on 75 meters uh, here in the U.S., Eric, uh, bo- both, I believe, on the East Coast and the West Coast. We suffer a particular... Uh, dysfunction here on the West Coast of people who seem more like they want to harm ham radio than they do, as they claim, help it. They use bad language. They have bad manners. They are not what I would call part of the fraternity of amateur radio. Now, the commission has made some recent moves to try and clean some of this up, but frankly, it has not yet been cleaned, and as a result, I built this 
God, I don't know how much I spent on that antenna, Eric. I bet I bet I spent twenty thousand dollars total on that antenna. And it was to have fun on 75 meters. But fun for me does not include bad language. It does not include jamming. It does not include the bad behavior that you can see exhibited up and down the 75 meter and to some degree the 40 meter band, to some degree even the 20 meter band. Uh, so I'm not sure what's, what's happened to amateur radio, to hams that once were well behaved and part of a fraternity. I don't know what's going on, Eric. Well, I seem to remember in the 70s when I got started, even when I was a novice, I used to listen to 80 meters at night in California. And um, I think there was even that stuff going on then. There was. There was. But to a far lesser degree, we have become somewhat of a less civil society in the U.S. Um, and, and I guess it's a reflection of the, you know, the less less civil society. That's all I can say. Uh, but I hope the uh, commission cleans it up and uh, they're making noises as though they may do so. Uh, one wonders, though, because it seems as though the FCC here in the U.S. is doing less enforcing, closing offices, and not doing, well, frankly, what people like myself hope they would do. Well, you would think, considering what the FCC charges for channels, you know, when they sell Spectrum at auction, <laughs> that they would, um, you know, put some of that money back into into their enforcement uh, division. Yes, well, uh, they don't. And, uh, I, you know, there there was a day when you had to, you actually got charged if you wanted a ham license. Uh, when you applied for a license, you had to pay a certain fee. They eliminated that fee. And I always thought that, well, maybe that had something to do with the fact that no money was going into enforcement. I don't know, but I would gladly pay whatever uh, to see that enforcement uh, is done. And I don't know. It's just kind of discouraging. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2NOS en s ochtends om half elf. Verder zijn de uitzendingen onder andere te beluisteren op youtube.com schuinestreep PA0ETE. Today we are talking about electric cars and to some degree specifically Tesla. Uh, so let's start there before we get too far into electric cars. Uh, what is Tesla? Tesla, Tesla Motors is uh, a car company that is dedicated to making just just electric cars, uh, and it started in the earlier 2000s, and we can get into the history of it if you want. They basically uh, didn't create a car, an electric car from scratch. They licensed um, electric car tech from another company called AC Propulsion, and they used that technology essentially on a frame of like a Lotus Elise uh, car and came up with the Tesla Roadster and they've been making electric cars ever since. And they have basically one other model right now that's 
mid to high end as far as price goes. And the goal is by 2017, they're going to be releasing a production model electric car that should be much more affordable and something that most people would you know, have a chance to buy. 